these 45 seconds of opening Luke Gogos are set to some old school Italian music, as if that will make them more tolerable. But I can't understand a word they're singing. And when I turned on subtitles, they weren't subtitled in Italian or English. In other words, loggy. There's really no need for this risky mission to the surface. All of these items were doomed to a life on the seabed the second these apparently experienced sailors decided to leave them as close to the f***ing edge of the boat as they possibly could, ready to be thrown overboard by even the most gentle of waves or errant elbowing. Stealing. Also, how is this creature even targeting the exact right spot for these things? If he's this able to quickly snag things without being seen, wouldn't you think his collection's complete? Seriously, wouldn't you think he's the boy? The boy who has everything? The sea monster, who we have seen deftly complete multiple laps of this boat, somehow swims directly into this net instead of literally any other direction. In the words of one of your fishy brethren from a much better Pixar film, swim down! Also, not fishing with merperson safe nets. I know it was the 20th century, but we should have known better, dammit. Swimming back to and leaping over the exact boat you were just trying to escape, instead of, you know, swimming under it. Or even, if I may, away from it! This gramophone is somehow still playing music. Now, I've never used a gramophone specifically, but I do know that record players skip around if you even dare to breathe in their general direction, let alone after being knocked from a boat and almost fully submerged in water. Ah! Uh, fish out of the barn! Fish out of the barn! Why did Luca have to look inside this so-called barn to confirm what is so clearly f***ing apparent? Was he hoping that an identical flock just so happened to be swimming by while his were still safely tucked away? Also, of course they escaped. This barn has no door! Are we supposed to be rooting for this asshole? <laughs> Wait! Look, I'll accept a race of mer people that speak fluent English under the water. Wait, would that be fluid English? Sorry, got pun distracted. Anyhow, I'll accept a race of mer people that speak fluent English under the water. But I will never accept an actual fish that bleats like a sheep. The line must reach on here! Yeah. But also, a race of mer people that speak fluent English under the water. Wouldn't these fish just swim away again? If they were content hanging out by the barn, why did they swim away in the first place? I don't know what Luke is feeding these guys, but this chap over here has either had too much or nowhere near enough. You wanna run off like your buddy Enrico? He's either dead or he's out there somewhere. Seeing the world. Jeez, Disney, we're doing both Finding Nemo and The Little Mermaid here. Do you know how to tell any aquatic stories that aren't about wanting to explore beyond your home? Because if they catch even a glimpse of you. But how have they not caught a glimpse of you? Did you see how close these guys live to the surface? How hasn't a single diver found themselves in Merland yet? They're here to do murder. Learning all the wrong lessons from the plot of the village. Actually, trying to learn anything from the village. Oh, it's magnificent. <laughs> Admiring your crabs. I don't know why dolphins even sound like that. You know, why don't they just talk? Swim Gaffigan would be excellent at cinema swims. I was just wondering, where do boats come from? Setting aside the fact that an underwater spit take should result in bubbles, not water, why are they treating this like a question he would be shocked or embarrassed by? Is it the boat sex? Do they have a lot of boat sex in this universe? We do not talk, think, discuss, contemplate, or go anywhere near the surface. Got it? Yes, Mom. Character agrees to not do something that they will end up doing almost immediately cliche. Now let's get back to work. Ah, so this is one of those expositional lunches where no one actually eats anything, but it still feels like you had a ton of crap shoved down your throat. No thanks, I I'm full. Having a character voiced by Jim Gaffigan turn down food. What buckets? It's fine. I'm not human. I just wear this diver suit around when I know I'm in a movie and need to provide some false tension. Forcing someone to become human without their explicit consent. Terrence Malick's Luca. Luca immediately turns back into a merson at the moment he hits the water, and earlier took about a second to completely dry off and turn human when he first came out. I just mention it because I'm sure the rest of the movie will be super consistent with these rules they've established. This is, uh... Smooka! Yeah, he's in charge now. This crudely drawn rock will, of course, work on these sheep bass. But why does Luca really expect it to fool his parents? I mean, it does, because his parents are as stupid as the plot needs them to be, but Luca doesn't know that. Wow. Ah! That was hard to watch. My daily recitation after finishing a Sin script somehow makes it into this script. Walking. Don't worry, you're in luck. I basically invented it. Citation needed. Walking is just like swimming, but without fins. Or a tail. And also there's no water. Saying something new is exactly like something old, and then listing a bunch of caveats disproving that claim is a clever, funny, and effective literary device. Except it's not clever, or funny, and it's not effective. See? Give it a try. Considering he masters it immediately after this, there's no reason this initial Luca Drywalker section of this movie should go on for all of this amount of the sum time. 
Everything good is above the surface. Cheese spot deniers. Also, this flies in the face of some pretty sound subaquatic advice I was given by a crab with a Jamaican accent back in the 90s. Air! <gasps> Except Luca was blowing bubbles underwater earlier, so I'm pretty sure he's aware of the concept. Gravity! Also exists underwater. The sky, clouds, the sun. All also visible from underwater, honestly, Alberto. You might as well give up with trying to convince me there are things on land you can't do underwater. I've seen SpongeBob! Whoa! You, you unbroke it! This f***ing thing still works. You just sit on it, and it takes you anywhere you want to go. Line I used to pick up my college girlfriend somehow ends up in this Pixar movie. Her response was, citation needed. <laughs> Delayed gravity! Alberto gets face gold here, and Fabio taught me what happens when this occurs in real life. And you don't want to see the pictures, so let's just go with, the bird survives this. We gotta ride together. If you don't sit on the back and hold on to the front, the whole thing falls apart. How's that supposed to be any more effective than a single occupant sitting on the back and holding on to the front? You got a Bruno in your head. Alberto, you can't. Alberto, you're gonna die. Alberto, don't put that in your mouth. Hey, I'm Bruno. Don't listen to stupid Bruno. Well, f you too, kid. Flying Vespas, Skyfish, Lava Water. High as f Also, letting your Pixar movie feel anything like the Cars universe. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> the overprotective mother that is hyper paranoid about the deadly land monsters was apparently content to wait until Luca had been missing for almost an entire night, rather than stopping him as soon as she saw him sneaking off. Too much oxygen up here, not like the deep, as you'll learn. Uncle Ugo is probably the most off-putting character in the history of Pixar. A transparent, mindless uncle that Sasha Baron Cohen is voicing to be the exact kind of uncle you would never send your kid away with. It's almost painful to listen to. So, seriously. Silenzio, Bruno. The world is a very dangerous place, Luca. And if I have to send you to the bottom of the ocean to keep you safe, so be it. Between Triton, Marlin, and now Daniela, the Disney execs should really think about putting together a support group for overbearing aquatic parents. They're sending me to the deep! But instead of sending you immediately, they're going to allow you just enough time and wiggle room to escape, so that we still have a movie. Luca, think about it. Every day we'll ride someplace new. No one to tell us what to do. No one to tell you now? Or where to go? Or say you're only dreaming? I swear when it comes to Disney themes, this movie is recycling more than the entire city of San Francisco put together. This is either a maddening ripoff or a brilliant parody. It's remarkable how often those two things coincide. Why is Luca's head shaded by the laundry right now when it's clear from his shadow that his head is in full sunlight? That's right, we're throwing some shade shade. F*** you and your cartoon physics. This unsecured radio wouldn't have made it past the first cobble on the street. Who got lucky? Narks. Ah, uh, just a huh? little bar. Attempting to drown a child in broad daylight. We get it. He's an asshole. You mean like a year ago, when you quit in the middle of the race because you couldn't stop throwing up? I'm surprised Eric Ole isn't a bit more muscular, considering the heavy lifting he's doing with providing all this exposition. What's under the dogs? Misquoting the Baja men. It's an epic, grueling, traditional Italian triathlon. Swimming, cycling, and eating pasta. So you need a teammate. If that's the case, then why has she been flying solo every year? She must enjoy losing more than the Detroit Lions. Luca learns to ride a bike faster than he learns how to walk. Who knows how quickly he will master other things like skateboarding or rocket science or baiting. Can you withstand passive aggressive verbal assault? Ugh. Ride the bike, number one and number two. Why was it kidding? Your bike is a disgrace. That's not passive aggressive. That's sarcasm followed by a direct insult. Passive aggressive would be like me saying, this movie must be absolutely amazing if you're under the age of seven. You guys want it just as bad as I do. You have the hunger. That's the most important thing. Yes, because nothing trumps talent and training like really wanting to win. Or the major league effect, for short. Rechopping the head off a fish. Why repeat work you've already done? It's so inefficient. This room contains a veritable orgy of evidence that this is a 100% nope zone for our Pisces protagonist here. Dinner's ready. Trenete al pesto. Why is Massimo cutting these fish if he's not cooking them for dinner? Was it just to intimidate the fish that he doesn't know are fish yet? Can't really blame Luca for being confused here. Who uses a hairbrush to eat pasta? I already mentioned how inconsistent the water rules are in this movie, but have we talked about liquid and food? How do these noodles not change the color of parts of his hand or face as he's eating? Can his skin tell what's plot convenient moisture and what isn't? Can this face lose? Well, yes, actually, because we've already been told that you've lost this competition five times already. There's gonna be land monsters everywhere. Ah! As fun as spouse on spouse violence is, the fact that they know about the change and that Lorenzo was literally right behind her should have been plenty of enough to ensure Daniela didn't think he was a sudden land monster. What? Ah! The sky's been leaking! Right, because it's somehow much easier to dry off after being completely submerged in the ocean than it is from having been rained on an indeterminate amount of time ago. Yes, this expedition is utilizing their skills, but Santa Stilton is this risky. As soon as they are hit with a splash of water from an expected wave, you can guarantee they'll be turned into a lovely two-course meal of spaghetti Alberto and polenta de Luca. This time of day, most fish will be right 
about there. Selling out your fish friends to be trapped, beheaded, and eaten. So they were sitting under the fish, on top of the fish. How the fishy f did they even get this boat back? You oh. thought we wouldn't find you? Well, guess oh, what? Thanks. It's time for us to go home. Oh. Why would Lorenzo confront this child so aggressively? He can't know this is Luca. Yes, it's done for comedic effect, but I still think there are a few steps he could have tried between, hey, are you my son, and into the ocean with you. I'm afraid your friends still need to pay the out of town weirdo tax. These picks are. I think he could have maybe gone a bit lighter on the villaining. I've never seen someone with such a weak mustache twirl it this hard. Much like you can try it, Vespas. That's Vespist. Every year they change the pasta. You have to be ready for anything. Uh, this is the real issue here. Stomach space, not pasta shape. It's like they always say, it's not the size of the noodle, it's the meaty and the ziti. Uh, not our kid, not our kid. So let me get this straight. The parents that are scared shitless that their child is going to be discovered as American decide that the best way to find him is to dip children into water publicly to see if they turn into one? Every summer I come here and everyone thinks I'm just some weird kid who doesn't belong. Trust Disney to bring us a metaphorical fish out of water B plot alongside a literal fish out of water main plot. <laughs> E.T. cliching your Bruce Almighty moon. Hey, <laughs> Luca, I've been looking everywhere for you. Alberto decided to try everywhere other than the place they have been staying for the last few days to give these two just enough bonding time before the inevitable third act conflict cliche. Luca! O okay. Awesome! This fun little kids movie about expanding horizons and trying new things is adding a jealous friend cliche an hour in! Yay! Despite getting drenched and exposed the other night, Alberto and Luca still risk sleeping outdoors. What are they not understanding about the literal bounty that is on their heads right now? This training montage is not set to eye of the tigerfish. Massimo is teaching Alberto the fork spin maneuver for pasta, and as much as I've tried this, it never works for me. It's just like chopsticks. I watch others do it effortlessly, and I just can't make it work. So every time someone tries to teach me a new tip, I just get angrier and angrier until I end up telling someone to chopstick it in their forking rabby holy. Nice try, I guess, but I doubt that spinning the checkers board will make your opponent forget what color piece they were playing, or not notice that they are suddenly and inexplicably losing. I want to go to school. This sentence somehow manages to be the least believable thing in this movie about sea monsters that magically change into humans. See? I knew this would happen. Sea monster! Oof. Pixar capturing the pathos of humanity in a kid's movie alert. The way this movie subtly echoes coming out stories and pain of being misunderstood is top-notch allegory. And the pain of this moment is lingering like a harpoon to the heart, which somehow is a good thing. Take your scent off, you digital drawing demigods. Of all the places for sea monsters to visit, Puerto Rosso? Have you seen this town? My father hunts sea monsters. Julia would be the catch of the day at CinemaSins. What are those marks on the wall? Tell me what they mean. I'd give all the sins back if they represent confirmed human kills and we find out that Alberto is actually the famed monster of Florence serial killer and then Iron Man, Hulk, and Mysterio show up to solve the case. Well, maybe I'm crazy. Take me. Gravity! I could go with a simple he survives this, but considering the behavioral example this might set for the children, I think I'll just point out that take me gravity is not a great catchphrase for your protagonist. Do you want your kid to become Steve-O? Because this is how you get a Steve-O. Volunteers, huh? You're late. Huh? One cup for each kid. Oh, sure, everyone in this town knows everybody else, but these two need to convenience themselves into the water table of convenience. Sure, this is an inventive solution, but Luca can't really think he has a kipper's chance at breakfast of winning the race in this thing. This outfit would put him so far behind, he'd have to rely on the other competitors being taken out by totally ridiculous circum- Oh, f*** me out loud, that's exactly what's gonna happen, isn't it? It's cool Luca Luigi's got his metal cap on and all, and maybe he'll find a secret star down there, but how is anyone on the surface going to know he actually rounded this buoy? <laughs> F*** you, movie, if you think I'm gonna believe that none of this huge crowd saw this bull shark right here. Bull How in the name of Aquaman's anus did Alberto manage to see the rain, find an oversized umbrella, and get it to Luca this quickly? Luca! Why? How does covering his eyes help anybody in this situation? Poseidon, take the wheel! You should have left when I told you. Now, I gotta kill some sea monsters! Why is he standing on the f***ing bike? He was throwing the harpoon just fine earlier. Can't prematurely celebrate from a seated position. So long, evil empire of injustice. Certainly adds dramatic flair, but there was really no need for Julia to sacrifice herself here. Ercole is so precariously balanced that even the slightest tire bump would have sufficed without requiring her to go full Russell Cass on his ass. He can't be the winners! They are not even people! I mean, also, Alberto wasn't even registered in the race, so there's that. And I'm so proud of you, and I am so mad at you! Parents! The winners of this year's Porto Rosso Cup! The underdogs. Wait, when did Julia get lumped into the winner's circle? This whole race is a travesty of a mockery of a sham of a mockery of a travesty of two mockeries of a sham. Sure is handy that this summer rainfall is persisting just long enough to allow us to witness these lovely scenes of land monsters and sea monsters existing in harmony.
Handy, but sinny. Hey kids, hope you enjoy all the tetanus that comes with this rusty ass Yankee Vespa. Santa mozzarella. <laughs> we did it. Praying to Jesus. Just remember, we are always here for- Skip! I don't care how good the selfie will look. Luca hanging out of the train like this is just taunting the hereditary gods, and you never taunt the hereditary gods. Ending your film by admitting it was just fine. This still f***ing works.